We can classify collisions into different types based on the energy that's lost in each collision. First, we can talk about inelastic collisions, where the things involved in the collision lose energy. What that means is that whatever kinetic energy we start with, we end up with less kinetic energy than we started. So our kinetic energy final is less than our kinetic energy initially. In the limit where we get all the way down to zero kinetic energy in the frame of reference of the stuff involved, that's a perfectly inelastic collision. That's where whatever objects are involved get stuck together and they have a combined velocity afterwards. So in their own frame of reference, that counts as zero kinetic energy in their frame of reference after collision. What about if you don't lose energy? Well, that's an elastic collision, and most real stuff is not this. Most things that you might think of as collision is inelastic in some way. But there are some things that approximate elastic collisions where you have things bouncing off without losing any kinetic energy. If you think about a bouncy ball, that's not elastic in this way. It's losing energy in those collisions. This is more like magnets of things on air tracks coming nearby and shoving off each other without touching each other. You can have elastic collisions kind of like that. Finally, we have explosions where something's breaking into multiple pieces and your kinetic energy increases. So you have more kinetic energy afterwards than you had initially. How is that possible with conservation of energy? In general, if you think about most explosions you might think of, you have energy stored some other way in chemical bonds, that you release that energy and it's an exothermic reaction that explodes and then stuff can go flying out. In considering these collisions, we're always going to try and define a closed system where mass is not entering or leaving our system so we can write our conservation of momentum for our system. If we can conserve kinetic energy, this is for elastic collisions, then we write down our expression for conservation of kinetic energy. If we can't, then we write down whatever we can write down to express how the kinetic energy is changing. We might know that we have some fraction of the energy that gets absorbed or something. And now we have two equations, one from the conservation of momentum and one from our energy expression that we can solve for up to two unknowns using standard methods. If you have two-dimensional collisions, then it gets a little more complicated as well, where you can now have two equations from your momentum. Because your momentum's a vector expression, you can have x and y. And if you have three-dimensional, you get three from that. Things get crazy. That's the basics of different types of collisions and how we approach using our knowledge of the type of collision to include energy in some way in their solution.